All right, welcome back. We are on tutorial number two for your vector portrait project. In the first tutorial, we set the foundation, brought your image in, renamed a couple layers, and did this posterize effect to let Illustrator help us cheat and identify our highlights and shadows. Now we're going to get started with our pen tooling, our initial illustration. Just want to point out that I am on my MacBook Pro with a trackpad. I do not have a mouse or a tablet at the moment, so it's with my finger, so my pen tool might not be perfect, but it will work for this demo. First things first, we need a new layer. All right, we're going to start with the face. So I'm going to hold Option. I'm going to hold Option as I click on the new layer button. The reason for that is it's going to open up this layer options panel, and I can name the layer right off the bat and I'm going to call it face and then I'm going to hold option and I'm going to do another layer and I'm going to call this face base option new layer face highlights and option new layer face shadows so we have face face base face highlights and face shadows the reason why I have face is there are technically not folders or groups inside of Illustrator but I want to group the different skin tones the shadows the highlights and the base color into one so that's why I created face so I'm gonna drag face I'm gonna click on face base I'm gonna drag it right on the face layer. Highlights, I'm going to drag it, and shadows, I'm going to drag it. You want to make sure that base is below, it's stacking order. Things that are below in Illustrator are going to be behind in the photo so that the highlights and the shadows will be on top. Now here's where you have to be careful. Right now we're not working on shadows and highlights, so I'm going to lock them. Okay, I can toggle this open and closed all right so this is just think of this like a folder I want to be on the face base layer that's going to be my primary skin tone my base skin tone okay I'm going to take the zoom tool and I'm just going to click and drag and kind of zoom in on the face a little bit I'm going to take my pen tool and then I'm going to hit D for default to make sure that my Stroke and everything's back at default colors. I want no fill and a black stroke. And you can bump up the weight if you want. I might bump mine up to two. You can kind of experiment. Here's a trick. You're going to think about stacking order and how things get covered up. Your hair is going to cover up your face, okay? So you do not want to pin tool around the hairline because then you have to match that exactly with your hair. You want your hair to cover up that line later. So I'm going to start maybe, let's see, I'm going to start right here where the cheek meets the hair. And my curve's going up and to the left, so I'm kind of dragging a handle out to tell Illustrator the way it's going. And then I'm going to go really big, way up into my hair, and I'm going to drag my hand until my shape is outside of my hair or outside of Mrs. Hayes's hair, okay? I don't want to try to follow it exactly. I'm going to hold Option, I'm going to turn, and I'm going to come right down to where kind of the edge is again, maybe somewhere like that, all right? And I'm going to go outside into the hair. It's fine. Now let's finish this up. I'm going to hold Option kind of tell Illustrator which way my curves are going. I want Mrs. Hayes to look pretty, so I'm going to make sure, best I can using a trackpad, get her face and features nice and round. When I come to the end, and I touch the final point, I want to hold the Option key so that I don't mess up the initial curve and I'm just curving my face to match or curving the face to match like that so I want to be accurate here and then you can go inside your hairline here because we will cover that up later once I have my 
face base. I'm just doing the line art right now. Once I have that traced, I can lock it. All right. And then I can unlock highlights and click on it. And that's going to be the brighter areas. You do not want to be super accurate. Don't highlight every little nook and cranny or to look blotchy, to look like you have a skin disease. Instead, do the general shape, okay? So I'm doing the general shape of the highlight, making it smooth, and this one actually wasn't very smooth, so I'm gonna just kind of drag that out. Drag a handle over here. So we want to not be too pointy, be kind of smooth, and then get the general shape of the highlight. Command click to start a new line. Have my pen tool, right? And come over here. General shape of the highlight. Try to get fairly smooth, not too many sharp corners. So it'll look kind of weird. Option as I finish up. And if I get a sharp point like that, I can hold down my pen tool, come to the anchor point tool, and I can come over there and just kind of round that a little bit, move some handles, all right? P for pen tool, got another highlight here. I'm gonna command click so I can start new. Always, always, always need a high, whoops. Again, not perfect. Stinking trackpad is a pain in the butt, but we wanna highlight on the top of the nose and command click highlight on the cheek your cheeks your forehead your nose typically always have a highlight and then possibly like here on the chin you do not have to do every little tiny highlight like this you can if you need it later but get the base shapes kind of like this and then I'm going to lock that. All right. I would come to face shadow and I would unlock and then I would do the shadows. So here's a tip on the shadows. I'm not going to do all of them. I'm just going to show you one as a way to cut stuff off. Okay. So let's say we need a complete shape. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to come this way. I'm going to come outside again is fine. All right. It's a little wonky, so let me move that. Oops. Maybe I'll start that one over. All right. There we go. Much better. Go inside. Maybe inside a little bit more. There we go. Coming along like this. And then here, I'm going to come outside the face. And I'll explain why in a moment. All right. I'm going to come over to this shadow. And then maybe I'll just do this part of the face like that. I'm going to get really close down here. Just the whoops. This lower shadow, something like that. Coming inside. Maybe while I'm here, I'll get the eye. All right, I don't want to overlap my highlight, okay? Be careful on that. I've seen people do that before. Do not overlap your highlight. It'll look weird later on. And then I have my shadow like this. Okay, reason why I went outside here, right? I want to match that jawbone exactly, okay? So we're gonna use a shape builder tool. I'm gonna to make sure my face base is turned off. I'm going to click my face base and I'm going to shift click that shadow that hangs over the edge. I'm going to use my shape builder tool. Shift plus M is a shortcut. And as we learned earlier in this course, if you option drag or option click on this area I want to cut off, it's going to delete it. And now I have this shadow that matches perfectly along here. And then here it's going to be covered up by hair, so it doesn't matter. So go through and do a any other shadows you might need, maybe on the other eye, other side of the face. I don't need to record that for you to see it. Finish up adding highlights and shadows, and then we'll see what you have after that.